Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2021 USHA Scholarship Overview. We're glad to have you all on the call today. Um, let me introduce our moderators for today. Um, myself, Shantae Gray, the event coordinator, and I'll be going over general scholarships. We have Chip Lewis, our communications director. He'll be going over social media scholarships. We also have Gabriella Spencer and Michael Smith, Jr., who will be going over the youth initiative. And then we have Morset Augusto, who will be going over the 50 plus healthy and strong. So today's agenda is very short um, and sweet. Uh, we'll be going over, I um, welcome you guys, but we'll be going over the deadlines, the scholarship program, the review process, and we'll have questions for the at the end. Um, if you can save your questions to the end, we'll stay behind and we'll answer all of the questions today. So let's get started. How to submit a scholarship application. Um, you can visit um, usha.life slash scholarships if you have not done yet. Um, please note the submission deadline is August the 6th for all of the scholarships. So it's August the 6th. We will not extend it. Um, at August the 6th at 5 p.m., the system will shut down. So let's go over the scholarship programs. So option A is USCHA registration only. Option B is USCHA registration, two nights at the conference hotel and a $100 stipend. Um, you will receive the stipend at the conference. Um, then we have the HIV 50 plus strong and healthy. Um, it's USCHA registration, four nights at the conference hotel, round trip transportation to Washington, D.C., and a per diem. We also have the V Youth Initiative, which is a USCHA registration, four nights at the conference hotel, round trip transportation to Washington, D.C., and a per diem. Lastly, we have the Social Media Fellowship. Um, you also can get a USCHA registration, four nights at the conference hotel, and round trip transportation to Washington, D.C. Please note that you can only apply to one scholarship. Um, the system does not allow you to, um, to try to get a scholarship for all of them. You only can um, register for one. So please, please, when you hear us um, talk today, listen to the one that stands closely to you. Um, if you've been in the 50 plus and you're out in the field with the 50 plus, you know, you may want to go for the 50 plus. But we'll have our moderators um, dive deep into each program. So let's go over the scholarship application process. Like I said, log on to USCHA Life slash scholarship. On the first page, you'll enter your email address. And please make sure you, eat, um, you use a good email address. I see this all the time that people forget which email address that they use. Use a good email address because you'll get so much information. You'll get confirmation emails. You'll get updates to your scholarship. Everything will go back to the email address that you use on your application. So just make sure that it's correct. Um, step three, fill out the application and select the scholarship type. Um, like I said, you only can select one, so make sure you select the correct one. Step four, complete the entire scholarship questionnaire. Entire. Do not miss out on step four. Step four is the most important part. So I'll be going over um, the U.S. I'll be going over the general scholarship. Um, I've been around for a long time, so if you've seen me, I've been doing the scholarships for the last four years, and it's just my baby. So I um, do the generic, I'm sorry, the general um, scholarships, which is option A, um, like I said earlier, registration only. Option B, which is USTHA registration, two nights at the conference hotel, and $100 gift card. And if you don't know, um, we'll be at the Marriott Marquise in Washington, D.C. Uh, we were at the same place in 2019 if you attended. Um, please note, information re um, provided on your submission is not confidential. And it will be shared with a committee that reviews all applications. So 
This information is shared with the committee, uh, which is the constituent advisory panel. Um, they look at the information um, and look um, to review the application. Next. So this is just how the application look. Go ahead, Chip. And the words are really small, but it's um, very simple. Um, each one have about five to 10 questions. Uh, please, please, please take your time. Read over this. Um, this is so important. This, this one page is very important. The demographics is good to have and everything else is good to have. But filling out these applications, um, this scholarship application, this page right here is the most important part of the whole application. Next. So now I would like to um, turn it over to Moses, who will go over the HIV 50 plus strong and healthy program. Moses. Thank you, Chante. And I'm very happy to be here and happy to be sharing with you uh, about our uh, HIV 50 plus strong and healthy scholarship. Uh, next slides, please. So the program goal, this program started in 2016, and um, we are very uh, proud that, you know, still in 2021, we're still moving forward with the cohort. And the, the program goal for um, this year is to engage and foster leadership among people HIV 50 plus, and the way you know we want to do that is um, through engaging people in social networking, health literacy, and other educational activities, peer-to-peer -peer training, uh, training the people to train others in their community, um, training about advocacy and social media campaign, and a social media campaign. And next slide. So the objectives for the programs are to build community, and you know the the we want to with this objective to reduce the level of isolation among members of the HIV 50 plus cohort. Um, also, the second objective is awareness and education. We want to develop awareness and educate about the prevention and management of specifically comorbidities related to HIV 50 plus people uh, here in the United States. And then the third objective is to promote leadership and advocacy, and is to develop leaders and advocates employing training, uh, political actions, and community mobilization. Next slide. So, um, so what what are we offering this year? So, um, the treatment division, which is the treatment uh, the division that uh, leads um, the HIV 50 plus program, will select um, through this scholarship program 50 individuals to attend the United States Conference on AIDS this year. Uh, we will provide a scholarship that will cover what was already said travel, hotel, and per diem. And then during the conference, we want people to be committed. I mean, coming to USCA is, is the initial of the program. At UHCHA, we have an aging pathway that you will be asked to attend. Um, this is like three, three workshops that have been designed uh, for uh, people aging. Uh, we have topics like policy and advocacy. We have also a clinician that is going to be answering questions about aging and other uh, clinical uh, questions, uh, comorbidities, et cetera. And also the, the last one of the three, but not the least, is gonna be a workshop on long-term survivors that uh, Tess Anderson and Linda Scrooge will be facilitating. So we're looking forward to uh, those workshops. And then, you know, we're also going to provide a lounge uh, for people HIV 50 plus for you to when you need to rest and recharge or want to socialize and build community with other HIV 50 plus individual, you can go to the lounge and chill and have your water and, you know, meet people and then reset and come back to learn more. 
And then after the meeting, uh, we will we are going to ask you to provide personal stories uh, to to have about your experience at USDHA to publish it in our newsletter. Next slide. So after USCHA, we have a series of activities every year to keep this cohort uh, engaged. And you know, we know isolation has been an obstacle uh, for this community. So we want to, uh, through social activities and webinars, we will provide opportunities for people to interact and uh, to create social bonding, is, which is crucial uh, to building healthy communities, which is that's what you know one of our main goals, and that uh, we also will have social events and like, uh, you know, cooking classes, gardening, indoor, painting, yoga, dancing, etc. We're planning to do four sessions like this uh, for, for the cohort. Next slide. And then, of course, you know, this is also about advocating for ourselves. Uh, we're going to uh, provide training on advocacy and you will participate in a virtual advocacy training. Uh, we are putting together two great curriculums that will be available online and you will be part of those. And also the advocacy training will organize us to be able to impact and advocate in front of our Congress uh, members and also through the agencies that provide services to uh, aging and and uh, also the organizations uh, that provide services so we can uh, advocate for the needs that we have. Next. And then the peer education project is also we're going to train you to train others and um, we're, we're going to provide these trainings online and we will provide certification. Um, the curriculum is about healthy living and uh, we're very much looking forward to have those available to you so uh, you can go to your community and train others. Next. Um, we have our series of webinars that we have been doing from the beginning. Uh, we have four customized online video conferences and they will be like uh, top with topics like, you know, an, a clinical update on aging and research information also about if we need uh, to learn about uh, services, mental health, so a variety of topics that are are, are complementary, are going to complement the other programming that we have and will give you tools to engage on the kind of services that you need to have. Next. So also this year we will provide mini grants uh, we will provide eight mini grants for a period of six months. Um, this is a small uh, amount of money that we provide. Uh, people have to apply and, and the application will be reviewed and the best eight applications will receive a mini grant. And the mini grants is for you to go to de develop an educational activity in your community or you know, it could be an event that will, will get people together and uh, we have one great that was about uh, walking your dogs and meeting people in the dog run, other 50 plus people. So it's it's you you be creative in a way that you want to organize your community and provide them with some information. So that's what the mini grants are for. Next. Social media training and campaign. We're planning to do a social media campaign um uh about specifically aging but also you know how can we stay healthy and avoid comorbidities and many other uh, messages that we have been planning for and this is going to be utilizing facebook and other social media platforms like instagram and you you know that we're going to have social media consultant so we're really looking forward to have a very strong social media campaign to you know disseminate our messages uh, to the larger community. Next. And that's it.
Thank you. Now I'm going Thank you, to- Thank you, um, That was great, great information. We'll now turn it over to um, Gabriella and Michael, who will go over the V Youth Initiative. Hello, everyone. I'm Gabriella Spencer, the Youth Health Senior Coordinator here at MAC, and I run the Youth Initiative alongside of Michael Smith Jr. So I will give you a brief overview of what the VEEF Youth Initiative program is. It is a 10-month program that begins in August, so we're starting next month. It, you're, to be eligible to apply, you must be 18 to 25. 18 to 25, if you are not in that age range, I would highly recommend you apply for other um, scholarships. So via 10 month programming program where we teach a combination of in-person and virtual meetings. So the in-person meeting will be a trip sponsored to USCHA with a stipend where you will meet all your other scholars and in person. And then you'll also receive funds to create a World AIDS Day project and an HIV Awareness Day project. And previous World AIDS Day projects have been kissing booths, someone did speed dating, it is, and we also have an aspect of networking and resume building. So previous, um, last year, we had Harold Phillips come in as a professional development speaker. We've also had speakers such as Dr. Tonya Petit, Dr. Sell. So there's multiple opportunities for you to get into the spaces of seasoned HIV leaders. And I will pass it off to Michael to talk a little bit more in depth about the curriculum. Thank you, Gabriella. So, so as you can see, we have developed curriculum uh, that will prepare you to successfully facilitate and lead your own World AIDS Day project and Awareness Day project as well. And you may be asking the question, well, who's going to teach us this material? And so we will have peer educators who are going to be alongside of you, giving you this material, working hand in hand with you, who's also, also gonna serve as a resource um, during your planning phases for your World's, World AIDS Day project and Awareness Day project. And so some of the curriculum topics um, include, but are not limited to, um, stigma and HIV, public health program planning, cultural responsive care, um, HIV epidemiology, biomedical prevention strategies, and of course, as Gabriella has already mentioned, the professional development speakers, as well as job readiness and resume workshops. So it is our goal and our objective that through this program, through this curriculum, that we're gonna build world-class leaders who are at the heart of the community with the community at heart. And so if you're interested, we want you to apply. And if you're not, maybe, you know, 18 to 25, share the word with someone else. This is your youth initiative. Thank you. We will also have um, interest meetings starting next week. So next week, Thursday, July 29th, we'll have an interest meeting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then the following week, August 4th, we'll have an interest meeting at 3 p.m. And so that just will give a deeper dive into what the youth initiative is, because in these two slides, they can't really do it justice. So please join the interest meeting if you are interested and you'll be able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with us and past peak participants. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Gabriella and Michael. Um, we will have their information located at the bottom of the screen. So if you're interested and it interests me in um, her inf their information will be available, um, then you can also email us at conferences at mmac.org and we'll put it in the um, chat box um, if you have any questions about that. So now we'll have Chip Lewis who will be going over the social media fellowship. Thanks, Shantae. Hello, everyone. Uh, so the Social Media Fellowship, each year at USCHA, we recruit a cohort of social media fellows to help us spread the word not only about USCHA and the conference and what's happening there, but also the message around HIV prevention, care, and treatment, including PrEP, PEP, treatment as prevention, U equals U, all of that. Um, and we rely on this cohort to really help us reach audiences we might not reach with those messages ordinarily. Uh, ideally, applicants would have uh, a large following on their social media platform, it could be any platform, but also we would like to find folks who have uh, networks that are outside the typical HIV community, uh, reaching folks who are in communities that may be at higher risk for HIV, but aren't connected to the, to the larger HIV activist and advocate community, who may not talk about HIV, who may not know as much about HIV as they should, uh, 
that's the audience we really want to try to reach with these messages. And we really want to try and recruit some social media fellows who can reach those audiences. Uh, fellows who apply can use any social media platform, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, any social media platform that's out there. Uh, and if they have, even, if they have a, even if they have a podcast, we would love to have them on uh, here at USCHA. We're looking for a wide diversity in our fellows cohort. We'd love that we always look for a good mix of uh, racial diversity, gender and gender expression diversity, uh, sexual orientation diversity, age, all of that. We want a wide range of, of uh, voices among the social media fellows to encourage anyone who wants to, to be a part of it to apply. And finally, as we said earlier, the social media fellows will receive travel and housing, but not a per diem. So daily costs will not be covered but your transportation to and from DC and your housing at the hotel for the entire conference will be covered. And I, I would just encourage you, if you if you are involved in social media, if you have a large following, please uh, go ahead and apply for this fellowship. Thank you so much, Chef, for that information about social media fellowship. So now I want to go with some tips for success. Everyone everybody wants to know, what can we do? How can we um, get this scholarship? How can we do this? Um, so the tips for success, very simple. Fill out the entire scholarship application. I cannot say that enough times. Um, so many times we get incomplete um, applications um, or someone will not submit their application please fill it out, like take your time, fill it out the entire scholarship application. Have a peer or colleague review the application before you submit the application. You could copy it all to uh, Word and um, take some time and work on it. Um, you don't have to just sit there at the computer. Um, you might wanna write it down and walk away for a while and think about it, but take some time out or have someone else review it. Um, answer all the questions in complete sentences. Um, be yourself. We love heartfelt stories. Um, give yourself time to think out each question. Um, do not use abbreviations. Uh, we always see DOJ, BAI. Um, I may know that, that, but the people who are reviewing the scholarship, they don't know what the abbreviations mean. So um, say it out, whatever it is, you know, type it all the way out and make sure you apply for the scholarship that fits your criteria. So if you know that you're more of the social media, you have a big following, um, you love to be on Instagram, you know, you got 100,000 people following you, you TikTok famous, go for, the, go for the social media one. But definitely look at it and see what fits you. Um, the thing that you should know that we cannot transfer your scholarship from one program to another because each scholarship has different questions. So if you want to transfer, you will have to email conferences at mmac.org, and then we can um, clear out your um, application and have you start again. Uh, but the system will not allow you to do two. So make sure you pick the correct one and, and pick it before August the 6th, because when August the 6th comes, I really cannot help you. Uh, but I also just want to go over uh, quite briefly how the scholarships are reviewed. Uh, we have our constituency advisory panel here in MAC um, who does this community work who reviews the scholarship. So it's a blinded, no one gets to see the names, um, but they go ahead and they review the scholarship and they send us the top scores. And we usually go over the top scores so the people who get the um, scholarship, get the scholarships. However, we give preference to um, applicants who have not had a chance to receive a scholarship. Um, those are our preference. We like first timers. Um, however, if your scholarship, if your application is strong, we have brought in people uh, from before. But to, um, to be upfront that we give preference um, to new applicants. So now we're going to open it up for questions. Um, if you have any questions, you could put it in the box right now. I'm going to have my team come back on, um, cut back on their camera so they can come back on site. Um, we just want to open it up for a while. We're here. We still have 30 minutes, guys. So we can go over the, um, as many questions that you have. So, um, Chip, do we have any yet? Yes. Uh, let me 
Uh, yeah, we have a question yeah, about what, actually, what is... You're actually breaking out. Oh, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, uh -huh. First question I have is, what, what are the ages for the VEV Youth Initiative? So the ages for the VEV Youth Initiative are 18 to 25. You must be 18 to 25 and turning 25 before uh, August. So if your birthday, if you turn 26 in July, then we can't take you. But if you turn 26 later in the year, as long as you're 25 when you apply and 18 when you apply, we can take you. Okay. Uh, we have a question about finding out if your if your completed application form has been received. Um, you can send an email to conferences at mi.org, and then we can let you know if we received it. Also, uh, if you go back to your registration, your confirmation number that you received from your email, you can also um, log back into your account, and it'll let you know if it's been received or not. We can't hear you, Chip. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, uh, of course, this person did not clarify which uh, scholarship to ask more, but do any of the scholarships have a needs assessment? No, none of them have a needs assessment. Uh, when will we? When will scholarship applicants? Sorry, when will scholarship applicants be approved? Um, so we're trying to um, have it out by the end of August, but if not, the first week of September. Okay. Uh, when you say transportation to the conference, what type of kind of transportation will you provide if selected for a scholarship? Uh, so um, our first priority will be um, by airline. But there are people that are closer. So we also, um, if you're driving in, we also can pay um, the mileage. However, uh, parking is very expensive. Um, it's about $35 a night. So um, I, I really don't suggest people to drive because it's, it's really expensive. Uh, next question I have is, um... Just want to confirm there are three categories for the scholarships, 50 plus, V youth, and social media. But there's also the option A and B. Yes, well. so there's it's five. Option A, option B, V youth initiative, 50 plus, and social media. Okay. Uh, do you have to be a member of NMAC to apply for scholarships? Absolutely not. We welcome everyone, but we also uh, welcome does, you to become a member. <laughs> uh, does the scholarship only cover hotel and travel and not the conference registration itself? So yes, if um, it registration is one thing that everyone would get with the um, with the scholarship. Registration is included. Uh, would we receive an email if we did or didn't get the scholarship? Yes, we will send out an email regardless. Okay. Uh, once the application has been submitted, is there a chance to add something else to the questionnaire? Um, yes, you can go back in and submit it. Go back in and update your um, application. And if not, you can send us an email and we can, um, we can make sure you get back into your account. Okay, um, how much is the per diem? So the per diems are different um, per group. Um, we will not know until um, we receive all the applicants. Um, so receive, until, I'm sorry, until we receive all the applications. So um, it's not structured yet uh, how much the per diems are. Uh, is there a geographical restriction to apply for a scholarship? Um, no, but you do have to be in the, um, the U.S. Okay. Um, what if you're not affiliated with an agency? How do you complete the scholarship when questions are asking about budgets? Um, so you, if the ones that says it's not mandatory, you can skip that. Um, a lot of people will not be affiliated with an agency, so that's still fine. We still want you. We still want you to apply. Do not let that discourage you. Uh, 
Uh, how competitive are the 50 plus scholarships? Um, not sure. What do you mean by how competitive? They're all competitive. So I should say we get around about 1500 applications. So it's, it's very competitive. Um, if we do not get the option B award, is it possible to still be considered for option A? No. Uh, if you're a consumer and don't work for an agency, how should you answer the question about where you work? Um, you don't have to answer that question. Uh, where can we get a copy of the scholarship application? So you can go to uscha.life um, slash life, um, uscha.life slash scholarship. And please note that this uh, webinar will be up on the website tomorrow, Chip. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's not yeah. tomorrow, Monday morning. Um, it'll be up on the website. So if you missed the beginning of it, um, I strongly suggest just to stroll back through this webinar and look at some of the things, uh, especially if you missed uh, where the scholarship is. Okay, uh, next one is, I think if someone who's trying to figure out which scholarship application worked for them, I am 41 years old and located on the Navajo Nation. I am transgender, not a social guru, so I'm sure 50 plus won't be for me. I've attended the T Block and Native American Block uh, trainer. So, um, yeah, I'm not so sure. Like more of an option A or option B, general. Uh, should I pay for my registration now or wait on scholarship? Um, so if you want to get the early bird rate, I suggest you pay now. Um, the great thing is if you do get the scholarship, we can refund your payment. So if you want to go ahead and get it now, I suggest it goes up after July the 30th. So if you want to go ahead and get it now, um, I strongly suggest you get it now. Uh, for social media applications, does one have to include their social media links? I believe they do. They have to at least share their platforms in the application, correct? Correct. And uh, information about their their followers as well, in terms of numbers and reach and all that. Yeah, they do have to include that. Uh, what's the deadline for the youth initiative? So the deadline is the same across the board, August the 6th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's for any applicant, any scholarship, it's all August the 6th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, for the 50 plus, do you have to be HIV positive? Um, you do not have to be HIV positive for the 50 plus. Okay. Can you clarify the question on the application regarding organization budget? Is it budget for travel or events? No, just the organization budget in a whole or the HIV um, budget. Okay. Um, what is available for advocates who are not positive but with 18 years of experience in the HIV field? We, we would love for you to apply. And, it, and we welcome everyone. This is not, um, you do not have to be HIV positive. It's all walks of life. So social workers, community advocates, if you're out here, HIV is your thing, we, we welcome you to apply for this scholarship. And if you haven't been to a USTHA conference, this is where you want to be. Uh, I should say this year is the homecoming theme. So, this is where you want to be this year. This this is the hot spot. Okay. Um, what if you might have submitted an application some months ago, but not sure? Or should you resubmit? Um, so it it will not allow your system will not allow you to resubmit because it's only one application uh, per email. And so you should go back to your email and find the um, your registration information, log back into the system, and make sure um, that you submitted it. If not, you cannot find it. Please email us at conferences at mac.org, and we'll get you all straight. Uh, what if you don't have funds to pay for registration up front? So it's not, you don't have to pay for registration up front. Um, I think the question was, um, if you if you wanted to, you can, but you definitely do not have to pay for registration up front. 
so I think someone's asking if how to know they're a member of NMAC. Uh, you can reach out to our development department to find that out. Um, mm -hmm. uh, D Fer Diane Ferguson, D Ferguson at nmac.org. Yeah, or development at nmac.org. Uh, I wonder if sometimes applying for a scholarship is discouraged. I've applied a lot of times and been denied every time. My question is that when you say priority, how comfortable is that? How comfortable is that is? Um, so when I say priority, we are saying that we um, give preference to um, new newcomers who've never um, received a scholarship. And so if you have any questions uh, about um, we always give at the end of it, if people have uh, um, have questions about their scholarship or why it wasn't accepted, you know, we can always give you a little feedback from it. Um, however, I think I suggest to go back and look at the tips about filling out the application, um, filling out every question of the application and not missing any questions and also just telling your story. And, and we and we wish everyone the best of luck. We want everyone to be there. So, you know, if you have any questions, I can um, you can shoot me an email at sgraymac.org and uh, we can go dig into that a little bit more deeper. Okay. Uh, for 50 plus, do you have to be 50 plus or could you work for the for this population? You can work for the 50 plus population. Uh a comment from someone this year was supposed to be in San Juan, Puerto Rico, but I've enjoyed it in the past. It's a unique experience. What's the question? Uh, it was just it was a comment. Uh, ah. Someone said this year was supposed to be in San Juan, but I've enjoyed it in the past. It's a unique experience. Yes. Uh, that's putting it mildly. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, have any questions yet? If you still have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box and we'll answer them. Um, in the meantime, Shantay, I'm going to put up the, the contact slides so everyone can see. Oh, here's one. Uh, in which portion should we tell our story? Should we include this and provide additional information question at the end? Um, no, just um, when you're um, writing out, there's no additional space. Um, just when you're filling out your answers to your question. Uh, could you please review the option A and option B again? Sure, no problem. Option A is registration only. Option B is registration, two nights at the Marriott Marquis Hotel, and a hundred dollar stipend per diem. Okay, we don't have any more at the moment, but. Please, if you have questions, go ahead and answer them in. And if not, if you don't have any questions and you don't want to put them in the chat box, just know that we're always available. Um, we'll put up our contact information um, in just a second. Um, also, I just want to say that we are so excited about USCH this year. And so we're excited to see all you guys. Uh, we're excited that you're excited about doing the scholarship process. Uh, we are working very hard around the board to make sure that everyone is able um, to come to the um, conference. So please, 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 if you have any questions, like we're open, we're available, uh, please do not miss the August the 6th deadline. I cannot help you after August the 6th. I can help you now, but once August the 6th get here, I cannot help you. Um, so any questions, please reach out to me. I do um, run the scholarship process overall. So if you have any questions about any of them um, and you don't want to directly reach out to anyone, you can reach us at conferences at mac.org and we can answer any questions. Um, but other than that, any more questions? Yep, we had one more that came in. Is it possible to get a scholarship twice? Um, twice how? Um, well, I think it, it's, you can't get twice in the same year, but you, you can get a scholarship more than one year. Correct. Correct, meaning you get one for USHA and biomedical? Oh, no, I, I mean, saying you, you, you can get one in 2021 and again in 2022. It's possible. Correct. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, are there limits how many people can be awarded per agency? Um, it's only one per agency, one person per agency. Uh, let's see. Uh, and just a reminder to everyone getting questions for folks who came in late. Uh, the recording will be available tomorrow on the USCHA website on the scholarships page. So you can find the, the, the recording there. Uh, I think you said it's not, is it possible for two people in the same agency to receive a scholarship? Uh, that's not the case, correct? No, it's one, it's one scholarship per agency. Uh, what requires us to list the agency we are supported by? Um, yeah, yes. If you if you're working for an agency, yes. Uh, and I think that's it for the questions right now. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, everyone who joined today. We truly appreciate you taking time out to hear about the NMAC scholarship for the USDHA 2021. Uh, just again, it's in Washington, D.C. We'll be at the Marriott Marquis. It's a homecoming. So, you know, bring your A game. Uh, we will be more than happy to see you and to welcome you. We, um, if you join any of our online conferences, you just know that we miss you guys. And we're looking forward to seeing all of you um, in October. Yes, thank you everyone. And if you're 18 to 25, the youth initiative is where you wanna be. <laughs> any more chip? Uh, no, no more, no more after that. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. And everyone have a wonderful day. Um, please reach out to us if you have any questions. But thank you, guys. Have a good one.